Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series. Today, I have David Morris with me. I am David Morris. I'm on the uh, performance engineering team along with Todd, and I am here today to talk to you about the hands-on labs that we have at VMware Explore, and you can also take in the comfort of your own home. So, David, you've been uh, a lab captain with the hands-on labs for quite a few years, haven't you? I have. Um, I've been with VMware about 10 years, and I want to say I've been doing the labs for about seven or eight years. It's been a really great experience. Um, every year that I have done the labs, it's with, it's been doing performance, and I just love it. Um, it's it's a way to introduce customers to uh, ways to measure and fix any uh, performance issues that they encounter in their environments. Awesome, awesome. So I understand that today you're gonna to give us a kind of a behind the scenes look a little bit at how the performance lab works and an update on kind of what's going on with the labs this year specifically. Yes, um, obviously the latest greatest version of vSphere is vSphere 8. So we've refreshed the entire environment. So we've got a lot of new content around the new features that we've introduced, things like virtual topology, virtual hyper-threading, you know, automatic right-sizing of virtual machines. All right, very cool. I think you've got a few slides you're going to use to help us through this talk. Yes. Awesome, let's go. The Hands-On Labs is a team effort. Um, it's actually quite a bit, quite a large team that leverages expertise from the Cloud Director, vSAN, Site Recovery Manager, you know, you name it. If it's a VMware product, we've got the expertise. So it really is um, kind of a cross-team collaborative effort, and it's distributed across a variety of different clouds. And it really is the best way to kind of learn our products. So how is this lab architected? This is really a cool graphic that kind of illustrates the behind the scenes process. So kind of starting from the bottom here, this is the primary virtualization layer, um, vCloud Director or vCD as we call it. We have site A and site B. Just for uh, the performance side of things, we actually only use this left-hand side. We used a variety of different ESX hosts and we've got multiple different networks. Folks are probably familiar with the fact that you're going to have a management network and a storage network and a vMotion network all on different subnets. And those virtual machines talk on certain networks. The, the vPod, when it's all said and done, uh, we finalized the numbers here, and they ended up being 23 layer one virtual machines, 11 of those being ESXi. 70 virtual CPUs were consumed, 288 gigabytes of memory, and three terabytes of storage. Uh, this vPod this year actually ended up being uh, three times as large as last year's vPod. And why is that? Well, you know, the fact that we actually combined five labs worth of content into one, it basically makes management of those vPods a little bit easier. We're developing QA, you know, staging and monitoring those a lot easier. When you actually sit down to take a lab, you actually don't know where that lab is coming from. It could be coming from VMware Cloud on AWS. We have five virtual data centers in the cloud, or they could be coming from one of three different on-premises data centers. Um, but we have another coworker of ours, Josh Schnee on our team that um, makes sure that when you take a lab, the responsiveness is really good. And regardless of whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, you're not going to get any sluggish performance. Yeah, I know that Josh and a lot of the team at Hands-On Labs does a lot of uh, capacity testing prior to the big event, VMware Explorer, every Absolutely. year to make sure performance does uh, go well for all the attendees. And I know you and I have actually compared the performance of on-premises vSphere versus VMware Cloud on AWS. and the performance is very, very comparable. So regardless of whether you use vSphere on-prem or v VMware Cloud on AWS, you really get good performance. 
So the lab environment, um, here's actually what it looks like if you sit down to take a lab. Traditional vSphere client shows ESX hosts within a cluster. You have virtual machines, you know, you can power those on. You know, this is an actual environment. This is not just something you read a manual and look at screenshots. You can play around with this power on, power off VMs at your leisure. Um, so it's it's actually just like you might have an environment in your own data center. The ESXi hosts that you're using in these labs are actually nested ESXi VMs running on a, a real ESXi server. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually have a screenshot that I'd like to show you. Um, if you. If you click on an ESX host, for example, you'll notice here that it's got the latest, greatest version of VMware ESXi 8.0 update one, but the model, where you would traditionally expect to see a server, vendor, and model such as Dell PowerEdge or HP ProLiant, instead it says VMware. And of course, the reason for that is it's actually not running on physical hardware, it's running nested. And that is because it's gonna be running kind of one nested layer or virtualized layer deep instead of you know, your traditional just on physical hardware. So what kind of labs do we offer? We have the SKUs here, which you know is not too, too important. The point being you just search for performance and these will show up in the catalog when you go to the hands-on labs. But we have three to choose from, like I said, vSphere A performance, best practices. And that's really around you know, the performance critical areas of vSphere 8. And this is where most of the new content is. It shows how VMs are automatically right-sized now using the virtual topology and virtual hyper-threading features. It's also got a lot of other good tips around making sure the hardware that you choose is correct and also how to do your virtual machines, ESX hosts, how to configure those properly. The next lab, which is vSphere Performance Testing of Workloads, shows how to measure performance of database servers, application workloads, and also how to analyze your vCenter server. The last one is a little more advanced. Um, it shows how to test the performance of ESX subsystems. So things like monitoring, CPU, memory, disk, and networking, and actually running tools such as FIO or spec benchmarks to actually drive CPU and memory load, how to analyze network and storage IO that's generated. So when you start up one of these labs, here's, how, here's what it'll look like. On the left-hand side of the screen, you've got Firefox in the taskbar, you've got Putty that you can open up to open up a SSH session to one of your ESX hosts or your Linux VMs. You can also open up PowerShell to run a script that will automatically do a variety of different things for you automatically, to make things easier. You also have a step-by-step -step manual on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, this is an example of how to determine a VM's hardware version. This is a little hard to read, so um, I encourage users to take advantage of this click to enlarge feature. Because when you do that, this is what happens. You get a blow up image of that thumbnail and it basically shows you exactly what to do in terms of step one. Click this virtual machine, then you click summary, then you use the scroll bar and this is your compatibility version. So the manuals are great and all the labs that I've taken are really taking you through step by step. But it is important to know that the like like you've talked about the the environment that you see on the left there is a real environment and you can do anything you want so if you want to veer off of the path uh, the actual lab because there's something you're interested in looking at a little closer some settings you want to look at something you wanted to try out you can do that it's a full environment it's a nested environment it's a full environment so yeah it's a great way to try out vSphere we just kind of offer here's how to do something but if you want to try try out something a little bit different where you uh, want to try it on a different host or on a different VM, you can certainly do that.
The last slide I want to show um, is from that third lab that I mentioned, the more advanced lab. I mentioned ESX Top. Uh, that's a great tool. Linux users may be familiar with Top, which is a running display of running processes and kind of what's consuming the most CPU in their environment or memory, that sort of thing. Um, ESX Top is, of course, the ESX version of that. It shows a more advanced view of how many virtual CPUs. You can. It also has screens for memory and network and that sort of thing. But our lab manuals actually take you through step by step of running performance tests and looking at various columns to kind of see, okay, after I start a performance benchmark, how does that drive up the utilization of certain performance counters? Um, you can kind of see here in this example, the percent used is almost 100%, whereas in this case, you know, we still have another virtual CPU that's almost got 100% idle. And this, like I said, um, manual kind of steps through and explains what each means. Yeah, so ESX Top is a tool that I know that David and I both use a lot, as well as a lot of our performance engineering colleagues, because it's a real-time tool to go in and see what's going on with performance as it's happening. So when you're trying to troubleshoot something that's actively going on, this is a great tool. And, and so the lab helps you understand how to use it, a lot of what it means, and it's a real good place to start. And then this last screenshot that we have is from another part of that third lab um, where you start a storage benchmark. You start a read, write storage tool called FIO. And then it takes you through using the vSphere client where you actually go into a virtual machine and create a performance chart that kind of shows you what the various commands per second or IOs basically are. So you can kind of see that that starts out at zero here and then starts to drive, you know, spike, right? As you generate those IOs. Very cool. That's really about it. Really hope you enjoy taking the performance lab. We always welcome your feedback. So David, is VMware Explorer the only place that people can take these labs? No, no. We uh, offer these year round uh, free from our website, uh, labs.hol.vmware.com is where you can go. And, and we have a huge catalog of labs to take. And, you know, they're, they're free for the taking, yeah. Well, I know that I'm excited to get to use the, the new labs that'll be coming out uh, this year around VMware Explorer timeframe. So David, thanks for coming by and talking to us about the uh, performance lab. Thanks to everybody else for tuning in. I hope to see you again on another episode of the Extreme Performance Series soon. Thanks, David. Thank you.